Okay. You better do it, Lord. You better get him, Lord. Before I get him, Lord. Hey. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that shit. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You Hold on. Do- okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. They better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Activate. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that shit. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, you better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You Hold on. Do- okay. Holy Spirit, activate. They better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit, activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that shit. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, you better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold act- on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. They better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Okay. Hey. Activate. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that shit. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. (laughs) Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. You can Hold act- on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. They better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hi. I was coming, you know. Oh my word, what's coming? Have to do with some kids stuff. Um, Hello everyone. Oh my goodness, please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay. Welcome back to the Shine Everywhere show. I love you all. Again, welcome all new subscribers. Okay, it's a lot of you coming over. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, Get comfy, get comfy. Shout out to all the new members. Um, Again, I love you guys. So I came over here to be messy. Um, why not? So um, we're definitely gonna do that. Let me pull, pull, let me pull up some stuff, y'all. Y'all know me. I'll be all discombobulated, girl. So let me make sure that I got everything. Let me look. So um, I feel like I got everything. 
Hassan Maker. Hello, everyone. Now, y'all was hitting me up about Hassan Campbell. Okay, um, Hassan. We're going to talk about him later. We get a chance to come back later. We're going to talk about Hassan. If you don't know who Hassan Campbell is, um, allegedly Africa Bambata put it in his booty um, when he was young. Okay. Um, and he said that when he came forward and said that uh, Africa poked you in the booty at bottom, uh, came forward when he came forward and said that uh, uh, Africa had did that to him, a girl that um, and nobody backed him like they back in calf. Don't see the comparison and why we're comparing traumas, but um, whatever. So Hassan said that we didn't back him when. African Bambada was backing him. And here's my problem with people like Hassan. Hassan, look at here. There are people that back you, okay? I did a video on you, uh, well, Africa Bambata. There's still a video, uh, it's still up. Um, I got a lot of views um, on it because I did a really good job. Um, and I tried to do one on you and uh, part two, but YouTube removed it, okay? Now, I don't know if you're over the line. I don't know what that word, but it was all you, okay? I used all your information. And YouTube said no. So, okay, since YouTube said no, we're good. Um, there are people out here that are backing you. There are. You're just not paying attention to them. You, you're not. You, all of y'all do that. I know y'all real weird. Y'all weird, weird. I guess the people in like the comments and stuff like that. I guess they too small. Are they too small? Because there's been plenty of people that have backed you, Hassan. Content creators and their audiences um, have completely backed you, even mine. So it's really annoying when y'all come forward and be like, nobody backed me. No, say nobody that you care about backed you. Say that. Say you don't care about Sean, Sean and the Sean W.A. show. I don't know who they are. Um, and none of that, none of that matters. All that matters is that the people that I felt should have been backing me, they wasn't. And that's all that were you and them glasses. Because um, agree, we were and still do um back you, okay? Um, we all believe that Africa was in your booty. We believe you. We believe you. We we do. We believe he beat up the cakes and wasn't supposed to. We get it, 100%. You said that, you know, he, he tore it up and um, he wasn't supposed to. That's what that word. And uh, we believe you. We we believe you, okay? Like, what are you going to do about that? Like, what, what are we doing next? What's the next step? Now that we believe you, where do we go from here? So, um, yeah. So just say that nobody you care about back you because plenty of people um back to Hassan so it's weird um when you say stuff like that it's very insensitive and it makes the people that have believed you and been supporting you to be like you know like F you you know since it's F us you know it's F you um type of situation um so I think that you should pay attention to what you say and how you say it okay like because that's weird because we totally backed you so it's like should I just delete my video or what because you're in it the one that's up years ago that I did. Just so silly did or what? Because I guess yeah. Moving right along. So um we will be getting into that later. Let's start off with Diddy. Let's get into Diddy. Now y'all know we've been over here popping him and we're gonna continue to pop him because he is of the devil. So um shout out to um love for becoming a ooh love. my love is that you did it um a girl thank you so much for re, um joining coffee so let's get into this now somebody earlier over here in the chat was loud and wrong as hell Saying that Diddy lost this deal four years ago. Um, they're all totally not true. I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it because Ciroc turned into De Leon, De Leon, or, or whatever you call it. Because that that's Diddy's. That's pretty much like what it turned into. 
it's not he lost the Ciroc deal. Like, it's just like, so, no, he was still partnered with the liquor company. We were just talking about this and how Miami on her show, Carisha Please on YouTube, on Revolt TV, that Diddy owns as well. Um, girl, um, she was promoting it every show, even having the people that came, um, the celebrities that came take a shot, um, you know, and whatnot. And that's what they were drinking free promotion when Diddy came on there and sat down on Carisha's show on Carisha Plays Girl, and they were taking shots and they were drinking raw. Um, they were super promoting um the De Leon. Okay. So um if it, the deal was gone, then De Leon wouldn't be in existence. So I, I don't know if you meant like the name Ciroc or what? Like I don't I don't know what that word, but no, this just happened literally like a day or two ago, two, three days ago. Um, not years or months, you know, or anything like that ago, like now. So let's get into that. I, I encourage people, please do your research. Please do your research. New York, CNN, Spirit Maker, uh, is it D D Diageo? <laughs> Diageo? Um, has cut ties with Diddy. Okay, hold on, let me go up so I can make sure this wasn't four months ago. <laughs> Let me make sure. It's a, girl. Okay. So, um, London based, uh, is it Diego? I believe it's Diego, uh, which makes well known liquor brands like Smyrna Vodka and Johnny Walker Whiskey, uh, countered that this was a baseless okay, complaint in an obtained CNN report. Uh, Diego, Diego, sorry, said Diddy's bad faith actions have clearly breached his contracts, okay, and left us no choice but to end our business relationship. Diageo, off Diageo also filed a motion to dismiss his lawsuit, okay, so Diddy sued. Okay, go right here. Spirit makes Diago has cut ties with Diddy, uh, ending, ending a lucrative 15 year partnership and recently uh, accumulated in a racial uh, discrimination lawsuit. Okay, so Diddy was suing them. Why was this discussed? It wasn't discussed because it was supposed to be, it was held under wraps. Okay, again, there's plenty of ways to go into a court proceeding and it all be private. So we know nothing about it. Like we have no idea. Remember back in the day with uh, Robert Sylvester Kelly and the girls that would come in and get settlements, you know, what not from his attorney. Okay, those things never made it into court. They never made it into court, but the complaints, the complaints were made. You know, I'm against Robert, you know, at the time, but they were stopped before it made it, you know, to like the police department and the public court system. You know, and stuff like that. Just like Diddy tried to do a Cassie's lawsuit, he tried to stop her lawsuit because it was private. So the lawsuit technically was already happening, just privately. Cassie made it public, okay, by filing it in New York. All right. Do we do we do we get that? So this lawsuit didn't come about this month. Okay. This is something that has been pending for months, you know, and of them been trying to work this out for months. That's why I said I believe Cass's tell-all book is, was either already written or like halfway done. Okay, so th this has been going on. We, the public, just didn't necessarily know about it. You know, so when people are saying like, "Oh, he lost that deal months ago," do you think this lawsuit just came out the other day? Did who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? Cassie didn't just plan this. This was years in the making. You know, and more so of her coming out with a memoir, a tell-all book, you know, and whatnot. Not her suing him. She sued him because he wasn't going to let it go out. So she's like, okay, now I'm going to sue you for what you did to me. So now when I write this book and, you know, when I, when I drop it or when it comes out, you can't sue me. Because that's what he would have did. He would have sued her if she would have just dropped that book. And that's on period. Just like with this company, he tried to sue them. Okay. Okay. Now he's making it a racial discrimination suit because they found out about Cassie's suit. These businesses don't want any dealings with that type of stuff. Your name cannot be attached 
to any of those things. So just because we didn't know what was going on with Cassie does not mean DAGO or whatever did not know. These people are alerted immediately. Anything filed in court, anything, whether it's privately, I literally have a whole lawsuit in my DM about a celebrity that never like made it public, but it was a whole court trial. Like it was a whole thing. A settlement was reached towards the end and all of that. So, and we had, we have no, there's no trace of it. If you go look at it on, online, I thought the paperwork was fake. I was like, girl, no, it's real. I was like, oh no, this is legit. Like when we put in the case number, and what, it, it's real. I was like, oh wow. And we have no idea. No idea. And it's a big celebrity too. Like he huge. It is a man and he's huge, you know, um, and whatnot. And this whole, it's like, wow. And the things in the suit, it's like, whoa. Like he made you do that? Like, wow. So yeah, this is how we're supposed to be with Cassie. That's how I know for a fact that Cassie wanted the world to know this. Because she could have gotten the 30 million without this ever going public. It could, it could have been all in the background. We have no idea. No idea. So not everything's public. When people think like, like oh, well, no. She made it public. Her and her attorneys made it public for a reason. Because now it's on record. Now it's out there. This is why Diddy's sick to his stomach. Because these are actual court papers submitted. It's, it's You can't run from it. It doesn't matter that he settled, that she can't say anything else. It does That doesn't matter. What matters is what's out there. Now it's here. And you can't take it away. The internet is forever. It's forever. So if Diddy had it his way, it would have stayed private. Cap Castle, uh-uh. No. No, okay, so say you pay me because I, I would have made a lot of money off this book. So if you're going to pay me the earnings that I would have made off the book, because I feel like that's how Cass is looking at it. Not money for just like, because people look like, oh, this is a money grab. No, Cassie would have made millions of dollars off of this tell-all book. She would have made so much money. It's like her going against Diddy. She would have made all type of money. Everybody would have wanted to interview her. Everybody want, would want to talk to her. Everyone. Everyone. And then when she starts to like literally list names, think about all the people that she shook hands with and has been near and in the room. Like, I'm sure she got stories galore, stories galore. And he don't want none of that out there because he knows we're going to believe her. She was with you for 10 years. I'm like, no, mm -mm. we're going to believe her because we already do. And he knew that we would. That's why he settled. All he has, a person truly has in this world is their name. So for Diddy not trying to fight for his name, coming to a settlement instantly means guilt. Instantly. So it's not Cassie settling. It's Diddy sending a settlement and they mutually agreed upon it. Okay? Not Cassie sent him a settlement and he said yes and then no. Other way around. If Diddy would have never sent Cassie a settlement, she would have took it all the way. She would have took it all the way. That's simple. She took, took it all the way. All the way to home. Literally. <laughs> that's the only thing that stopped it was the settlement. And you see how quickly Diddy settled it. Diddy settled the lawsuit, not her. Diddy did it. So he wanted this done. But the problem was that it's public. Now, he would have felt a lot better about this happening privately. Because that's what it was doing for months. This has been brewing in the background. Months, maybe even a year. It's been brewing. So people want to cut ties before it is made public, if it's being threatened to be made public. With the tell-all book and all of that stuff, you got to go. So that is the reason not because because people looking at it like oh she just came out with this lawsuit that that means that they cut ties with him no we just found out about it not a uh, diagi or however you say the liquor company diagi i believe it is um not them they've been new been new about this and this isn't the only thing there's other things that are coming out too this is a huge deal 
for them to break a $100 million deal. Okay. hundred million. It's a lot of money. And, it, and it's like guaranteed, like pretty much like that money, it just keeps coming in, you know, like a never ending well. So to cut that is cutting a big bulk of the income that Diddy was bringing in. Okay. He just had an, an event that he was supposed to go to that was sponsored by the same company that he tried to sue and they just canceled it. Now that is as of recent, that's how you know they don't, they're like, we're done. Like it's, it's over. You know, they already cut the business ties with them, you know, but he's not going to come forward and tell you that. Instead, he tried to privately sue them. They came public with the lawsuit, not Diddy. Diddy did not go public with the lawsuit against them because he knows what it's about. The lawsuit is about them dropping him because of what Cassie was submitting into court and bringing and planning to bring public. So you got to go. So that's what they did. If you're a business company, if, I mean, if you're a company. And you're dealing with someone that you know what's about to have this rep. Do you want to cut them when it's exposed or do you want to cut them before? It would be best to cut ties beforehand because then you get to mutually walk away. And then when you walk away, whatever's going on with them is going on. And it does not affect your company. It does not affect your brand. You don't, They don't have to worry about people hitting them up like, hey, do you have a comment for Diddy? I mean, about Diddy? You know, he, he's working with you. He, you're a partner with the person that there's a huge lawsuit against right now for all of these allegations. They don't have to worry about that. Because everybody else is going to want, you know, people are going to question. Like, okay, are you still planning on working with him? You know, after these, because it's out there. He doesn't get to take it away because he settled. Settling doesn't make it go away. Because it's, it's here. And it ain't going nowhere. So, um, my girl, this is what this was all for, okay? All because of Cassie. This is all because of her. And there's more. There's more things that are coming out. And you'll see, because if this was as private as it was, imagine what else is going on um, in the background. So, anyways. So, the London-based um, Diageo, which uh, makes well-known liquor brands like Smirnoff, Vodka, that's, you know, uh, Ciroc, that's what it was you know, made of. And uh, Johnny Walker whiskey, and that's what the De Leon is made of. The whiskey, it's a whiskey. Um, countered that this was a baseless complaint in a statement obtained by CNN. The IGO said Diddy's bad faith actions have clearly breached his contract and left us no choice but to end our relationship. So when they're stating bad faith actions, the company money wise it's doing them fine so they weren't like losing any money you know or anything like that that's why did he sue for discrimination because then he's like what other reason would you be getting rid of me because he didn't do anything like that let's be honest he didn't do nothing he didn't do anything until they're like we need to let him go like wait mm. It was more so of just these little things over time of them working with him for 15 years that they kind of just, since he was suing them, they weren't suing him. They just wanted to part ways. They requested that the suit be dismissed because it was about uh, racial discrimination. And how is the racial discrimination if you've been working with them for 15 years? Clearly, it's not that. He don't want to say what he's really being discriminated against. And it's more so of a, this hasn't even, like, it's not public. It hasn't even technically made it into court. Um, as of now, there's no reason to cut ties with me, you know, because of this, you know, and because he did, he feeling like he was going to settle with Cassie behind the scenes, settle with her so that this never became public. So he looking at it like, I'm going to bury that. There's no reason to cut ties with me. Is how Diddy was looking at it. And they like, no, from what we gather, this can come out at any moment. They didn't know when it was going to pop. I feel like they thought it was going to happen earlier this year because they cut ties with him immediately. But it's about Cassie not cutting ties with him just because. And now all of this stuff is coming out with Cassie. That is wrong. That is, again, why he filed a racial discrimination suit because he couldn't sue for anything else. What else was Diddy going to sue for? What else is he going to sue for? Sue for? Because they didn't, because they weren't trying to sue Diddy. Remember, he sued them, so they wanted him to quietly walk away, quietly just leave, go out the back door, <laughs> you know, uh, type of situation. So Diddy sued, 
So I want people to understand that. You know, so then he sued. If the reasons were just, why would they sue? Did he sue because he didn't feel like it was fair? It's not fair because y'all judging me on something I haven't even been tried with yet. Like, I'm not even guilty of anything. And y'all already saying that I am, you know? So, of course, it's just like y'all discriminating against me, you know, because I'm Black. And they don't have anything. 15 years? You don't think they would have started discriminating against you a long time ago? They made a lot of money off of Diddy. A lot of money off of Diddy. Billions, probably, um, off of him. So, yeah. It was not a problem to get rid of that $100 million deal. Like, it was like that chunk change um, compared to the other people that they can work with and whatnot. So it's just not a big deal, you know? Um, and he's not a super sought after person anyway. And with all of these allegations that are about to come out about you, we, that's bad for business. So you gotta go. And so that's what that were. Okay. So they said like, look at here. Nah, we just decided you know, bad faith actions, you breach some contracts, <laughs> Breach some contracts, which that doesn't make sense either, because if he was breaching contracts with Diageo or whatever, why wouldn't they sue him? It's like you're breaching contract. So with him breaching contract and Diddy's a billionaire, they could sue him. They chose not to. So you could tell they just want to go away. Get away from us. Get away from us. Like that, that's that's all. That's all. So um, yeah. So, anyways, it's pretty. Um, Diageo also filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, not a counter suit. They dismiss. They want to dismiss a uh, dismissal, not a counter suit. Dismissal. They just wanted to go away. Get him away from us. Did he accuse uh, Diageo of failing to market his spirits, uh, which also includes Ciroc Vodka in a similar manner with the um, its other brain, including Don Julio um, and the George Clooney founded Casamigas brand? Um, Diageo responded that he has amassed nearly one billion dollars from their partnership. They said he almost made a, a about a, he made about a billion dollars with us. So again, if Diddy's made. I, so imagine if he made a billion from how imagine how much they made, you know, for him to make um billion. Okay. Now Casamigos is George Clooney's, right? Pretty much. Um, and that brand is doing very well. So George Clooney that made plenty of billions um off of this brand. Same thing with Diddy. Diddy made billions, like a, a bill, at least a billion dollars with them, not counting his other endeavors and the other money, um, you know, and whatnot. So they like. No, he's made a bit about about a billion with us. We have the receipts to prove it. So we don't we don't care nothing about him saying, oh, we didn't pub it like this and push it like that. Those are excuses because Diddy had nothing else. And of course the court is gonna look at it like, okay, well, you made a billion dollars off of this company. You made a billion dollars. So why would we be like they didn't pub you? Now, if you didn't make any money, or if you're going in bankruptcy because of certain things or this is you're putting more money out than you're putting in. That's something we can look into. But a billion dollars, get out of my face. You know, <laughs> like get out of my face. And you talking about something you've been discriminated against? A billion dollars? Like, yeah, no, we don't we don't want to hear that. So again, with um the company, they just clearly wanted to get away from Diddy because they made a billion dollars with him. So if they made a billion, I mean, he made a billion. Imagine how much they made, probably 13, 14 billion, you know, um, dollars off of you know diddy so he's good for business because they, again they, it's all about money at the end of the day it's all about how much money is coming in um loyalty who you know all that stuff that really don't matter in this day and age it's money who brings in the money so that's why they were just like yeah no you gotta go because again he's good for business so for them to part ways with him it's like why and they were never specific they never were. They just say, you know, he breached some, some contracts and yeah, he just needs to leave. <laughs> you know, it's how, um, you know, the company is feeling like, yeah, he got to go. He got to go because it's private. So it's not like they could truly say now they could say it, you know, like um, if they were still like partnered um, with him, they could say it now. They could be like, you know, we're parting ways because of this um, in light of this lawsuit, you know, and whatnot. Again, we didn't know. But they knew. Please hit the like, 
please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. So um, let's keep reading. So uh, Diageo um, and Combs have partnered on Ciroc Vodka since 2007 and 2013. Combs bought De Leon and formed a joint venture with Diageo um, for the high-end tequila. Diddy said in the lawsuit that Diageo kneecap De Leon sales growth for nearly a decade because the company considered it a black brand and marketed it only to urban customers. He also claimed that Diageo executive told him that if Combs were Martha Stewart, then his brands would be more widespread. Diageo has denied the accusations. Now, I'm going to have to agree with them. Um, if you want something to cross over, then that's your responsibility. It, like, like you said, if you were Martha Stewart, it'd be easy for you to cross over, meaning like everybody um, is interested in you and your product. How Diddy is, you know, with people like hanging out with the rappers he hang out with, you know, and stuff like that. You know, you, you're pushing it urban. You're not really doing anything um, to make it. You're, you're, that's not their responsibility. It's yours. Like you bought the brand, you know, like you partnered with them, but this belongs to you. Like this is your product, you know, and whatnot. If you want a more widespread, then make it more widespread. That's it. I would have been appealing to all audiences. I would have had different um, people in, from all communities and nationalities um, and all of my uh, little commercials and promotion, you know, all of that. I have um, Asian models and Latino models, black models, Caucasian models. Um, I would have all races and nationalities. Absolutely would. I feel like the more people that see themselves in something is going to want to, you know, do it themselves. But if you keep pushing it, you got all of these urban artists and urban models and stuff like that pushing it, then that's the, I mean, what, what do you expect? You can't say you want to appeal to the, the uh, um, a, a different audience, but you keep doing a music that a certain audience in particular. So you can't be a country artist saying you want to appeal to the black audience. The majority of the black audience don't necessarily listen to country. So how are you appealing to them? You're going to have to cross over and do what they do to appeal to them. You know, when Taylor Swift started switching it up, that's when she started, you know, kind of being more widespread for like even black people, you know, were starting to fail her. But when she was just, you were Romeo, I was just throwing pebbles. We weren't feeling that. But when she switched it up and now we got bad blood, I'm like, okay, Telegram. You know, so you got to switch it up. You know, so that if you want, you it, make it more diverse so that it can expand. You didn't do that. You didn't do that. You stay country, but, you know, wanted a different audience. It's weird. If you want people that listen to pop to listen to you, then you need to do pop. If you want people that listen to rock to listen to you, then you need to do rock. You know, like that is that's how you want to appeal to them. So if you want the white audience, the Asian audience, the Latino audience, if you want all of them to be, you know, using your product, then that's who you have to appeal to. You can't just appeal to one audience. That's the thing about Rihanna Fenty and stuff like that. What made her so successful is that she appealed to all audiences, not just one. She had all type of models and it, models all different sizes, you know, and stuff like that. She didn't just do skinny models and all of that. No, she does all sizes so that it appeals to everyone. Not that it just appeals to certain people. Yeah. So, um, because they, they be saying, because that's one thing they say about these designer things. Like when I go into the liquor store, it's always plenty of daily on. It's not almost gone. But Patron, stuff like that. I've been into liquor stores and they not had any. Like, and we just saw our last bottle. I ain't been in, if I want to go get some Ciroc, it's plenty of it. I mean, it's a wall of it, right? But it's so popular. It's like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Because there's more people walking past me with Casamigas than walking past with De Leon. Because Casamiga appeals to everyone. There's a lot of Black people that are into Casamiga. And again, look who the endorser is. Because he made it appeal to everyone. He didn't just make it appeal. George Clooney didn't just make it appeal to white people. He didn't do that. <laughs> like, no. So, like, he made it the drink to have, you know, type of situation. You do the same thing. You didn't do that. It's always plenty of De Leon, plenty of Ciroc. 
You ain't got to rush to get that. You can walk comfortably and know that it's still going to be there when you get there. Maybe all type of color bottle. They all there. Just like with Gucci, Prada, all of these other places. When you walk into them stores, it'll be full. The only thing that barely have anything on it is the clearance rack. I promise. I promise. You go into these big designer stores, full inventory, <laughs> full inventory, but they sell popping tin. If you're so popping tin, then why do you have so many clothes to <laughs> Why? Why so much in here? I thought everybody were Gucci. I, I thought hashtag swap me. Like a lot of you girls be walking around in fake because I'm um, a girl. Because I'm like, every time I go in this story, that's why when people raid the stores, there'd be so much stuff to take. That's why they raid y'all since ain't nobody buying that shit. So a lot of these companies be happy that y'all be, you know, running in their stores taking all that stuff because it wasn't selling no way. <laughs> now that insurance can kick in and they be happy when y'all be looting and stuff like that. The only store you pretty much gonna go into that is still selling, selling, because black people, we lock ours right away, is sh of shoe stores. So if you go into like a Foot Locker or a Champs or you know, something like that, a lot of times they may not have your size um, and stuff like that because they be the only ones that's still selling. If there's any malls, because like, the majority of malls are closed, but the malls that are open, you're going to see more shoe stores than you see anything because those are the only thing that for sure sell. They sell like no matter what. Like they're they're gonna sell. You're, if you have a shoe store, you're gonna sell. You absolutely are. So, but everybody else, you go into Macy's and stuff like that. Full inventory. Full inventory. You go into JC Penney's, all the ones that are still open, they got your size. I promise you. You ain't gotta, they got it. They got your size. <laughs> they they because they ain't really selling anything. So I mean they. They got your size. So it's the same thing with these liquor. You're not selling anything. Like you're, what you're selling is mediocre because it took him again 10 years to make $1 billion. I'm sure George Clooney probably made a billion dollars within a year or two. Honestly. Um, like, let's keep it real. And Casamigas is not cheap. Um, it is not a cheap liquor. None of the Casamigas, um, no, no, none of them are cheap. So each bottle, like 40, 50, uh, depending on where you live. Um, it's not cheap. So yeah, Ciroc is though. Ciroc is cheap. And it's super sweet. That's why I can never get into it. I'm just like, it's it's too sweet. Um, of it's gross. I'm like, I just feel like I'm drinking sugar. Like it was it's way too sweet for me, honestly. That's why I couldn't. I was if it was a good liquor, I would drink it, but it's it's too sweet. Real gay. It's real gay, Lord. Um, it's, it's, it's real gay. So I, um, it's like a martini in a bottle. <laughs> like, honestly, it's, it's really, it's really a homosexual drink. Um, it's really like homo. So, um, yeah, y'all tried it really gay made by gay. So of course it's going to taste like, it's like gross. That's why he always in gay clubs is because that's what they drink that. It's a very gay drink. Um, if you ask, I mean, girl. Very so much, get it for the lady, you know, get her in the mood. She could have a whole bottle because it's they only this long, you know. <laughs> like this big, and it's only a little piece. Um, my alcohol in it. That's why people are like, let's go get some Ciroc. Why? I'd rather get some Kharkov. <laughs> I'd rather get some Kharkov. Like, girl, I want none of that sweet. Girl, let's go get some of that car crash, bro. Like, go to me, bro. Go get some sky vodka or something like that. Girl, don't you come out here with no damn Ciroc. You don't even need no chaser. So sweet. It's like you don't even need a chaser. It's like gross. It's like an energy drink with alcohol in it. So it's real get you under the influence to have you take BBC. Like I'm here flip. So um move right along. Um, let's keep reading on this. Mm -hmm, girl. So, um, gays, so uh, Diageo said Tuesday that Diddy has reportedly undermined our partnerships and threatened to publicly defame Diageo, okay? Now, threatened to publicly do so. Didn't Cassie do the same thing? Cassie threatened to tell a book. Mm-hmm. 
but we didn't know. This was all private. This was all private. Like we, we didn't know nothing about the tell all and none of that stuff. All we knew was that she filed these court documents in court and everybody was going around reading them. We didn't know what was going on, you know, prior. Mm -hmm. Like Diddy didn't tell y'all that his uh, um, first agreement, that his first settlement between um, 10 million and um, 30 million, between 10 and 30, he sent that months ago. Okay, he sent that months ago. So that's what I'm saying. Cassie could have been sick to 30 million. That's why she said 30 million because he said between 10 and 30. Okay. And then she was still stating that she was going to go for So then she said, you know, I guess 30. Okay. So she was like, okay, 30. That's where the 30 million came from. So with them saying like, oh, she requested $30 million. Lies. Like, stop lying. No, she did not. No, she did not. The last offer Diddy had ever was months ago, and it was ten million, between ten and thirty million dollars. That's what he was willing to give her, and she said no. She said that she was still going because she wanted to come out with her book, you know, and whatnot. Okay, so what she her point of the lawsuit was to sue him so that when she came out with her book again, when she comes out with her book, he can't sue her. What's the point of putting this book together? Putting it out just to be sued for millions of dollars. And nine times out of 10, I may either have to settle with him, you know, or something like that. So instead, she took the smart route. I'm going to sue you for all this first so I can prove that you did it. Okay. Even if this don't go through the lawsuit, we're not fine. I still get to talk about it. I still get to state the things that I've stated. Okay. And they be factual versus to her just saying it in a book as rumor. So she can sue him. He can sue her for a rumor. It's not a rumor. She's going to court. You know what I'm saying? So he can't say that, oh, no, she's lying. She's slandering my name in this book, you know, and all of that. And I don't even think Cassie was going to use real names. I, I think she was going to use, like, you know, fictional, you know, and I don't, I don't feel like she was going to, like, say Diddy or Sean. I don't, I don't feel that. But I feel like she, we would have known who she was talking about. So, um, yeah. So, of course, yes, the deal came with a new NDA. Um, so, of course, but here's the, Cassie, the, the statute of limitation is up on the majority of these things that she's claiming about him, right? So, even with her coming forward with her truth, he's still not going to be charged for him. So, Cassie knew at the end of the day, she wasn't going to beat him. She knew she wasn't going to beat him. He has too much money, too much power. Way too much power. I know I'm not going to beat you. I know you're not going to let me come out with this book. I know you're not going to let me do it. I know you're not. But I'm going to get out what I need about you. I'm going to do that. Okay? And she did. So her attorneys told her once she filed it, because Diddy was already trying to settle with her. Again, it didn't need to be filed. It did not. It did not, because he had already offered her the 30 million. That's why she and put 30 million in the lawsuit for how much she was suing for. So again, she you're so you're suing Diddy for something that he already agreed to give you. Where does that make sense? So you're trying to go to court and fight for an amount that he already said here. It doesn't make sense. What does make sense is that she wanted it public. Like I still want people to know. Since I'm not going to be able to express myself how I want to express myself, since I'm not going to be able to do this, I she she's the first thread to it. To, <laughs> domino effect. She's the first domino. She's like, I'll be the first domino. Now, I may not be able to draw this home, but... All of that information can be used against him still. The lawsuit, you know, and whatnot. So what she did was smart. What she did was smart. It, it was. Because now what's out there, we all know. If Cassie would have just took the money, quietly walked away, we would have never known. And Because this was so many other people have done. That's why Aubrey Alday needs to shut the up. Because plenty of other people have took settlements. Plenty. Plenty. So don't, don't do that. Don't make it seem like Cassie's the one and only. Oh, 
know. There's been plenty because they know they're not going to win. How do you beat a millionaire? A billionaire? How do you do that? You don't have the power, the money, like all it. You got so many moving parts that's working against you, you know, and whatnot. Look, Cassie come forward with her story instantly. People come down. Oh, it's a shakedown. Oh, she drew. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't have been a shakedown if he would have just let her put out her book. She could have made her own millions. Why doesn't she get to say her experience? Because he knows that he's evil. He knows he's an evil person. Evil people, they don't want you to know that they're evil. People that be putting their hands on women and stuff like that in the background, and, and pro they don't want you to know that. They always get caught. That'd be the thing. Y'all don't see any athletes and stuff in elevators doing this stuff to these women and stuff. Y'all haven't seen it? We would have never known. We still don't know what happened in the elevator between Solange and Jay-Z, but we know what happened. We don't know why, but it did. And if not for that elevator uh, camera, we would have never known. We, we would have never known. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean, you know, just because we haven't seen it or heard it, that it didn't happen. It doesn't mean that, like, not everything is on camera. So I think Cassie is amazing, you know, for making sure that this information made it public because she didn't have to. She didn't. Um, okay, okay, yeah, we're trying to get to the Marcus, okay. Um, so we're right here. So the company also said they've invested more than 100 million to help grow his tequila and accused him of only contributing $1,000. Sounds like Bad Boy Records. Mm -hmm. They put a hundred million dollars into his company, into the partnership. He put a thousand dollars towards it. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. A thousand dollars. But he's saying that, that's what I'm saying. Y'all put a hundred million in this dude, and y'all don't and y'all don't want to work with him at all. Y'all want to cut ties. It's for a reason. Can I see? Can I see? Like 100 percent Because I always kind of found this weird when I first did research on it. That's why I really never talked about it. Because I was just like, well, that's weird. Like, why would they just cut ties? And then this comes out with cast. I'm just like, oh, it makes complete sense. Makes complete sense. Makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the same thing he did with Bad Boy Records. He paid to get Bad Boy Records, right? Which, you know, paid the fees and stuff to get it. And then the artist did all of the work. All of the work. The totals, the uh, Notorious B.I.G.s, the Craig Max, the uh, Maces, the, you know, all of them, the Mary J. Blige's, the Lil' Kim's, the Junior Mafia's. They, they did all the work. They did all the work. While he just sat back, take that, take that, take that, take that, taking their checks. Mm hmm Correct. Correct. Why do y'all think with the bad boy contracts that he is the people that he's allowing to get their um publishing? He is saying that they have to sign a DNA, a law DNA, NDA, <laughs> an inset NDA that cannot speak ill of bad boy records. Why do you think that is? He doesn't want them speaking bad of bad boy records because he still makes money off of it. Okay, all of the music, you know, and all of that stuff. He don't need y'all coming forward, talking about y'all stories and, you know, the how he treated y'all, you know, and whatnot, how he was, you know, and whatnot, so that it could keep selling. Okay, so because who cares what they say after he gives them the publishing back? It's just like, so what? He's still making money off of it. So, yeah, they're going to get their publishing, but he's always going to own a percentage of it. Like, you're, you're, you're never going to, it's what keeps him rich. So to literally just give you your publishing, no, but I will give you a percentage, you know, a high percentage of your publishing so that you're able to go around and perform it. And um, if artists want to remix songs of yours and whatnot, they got to pay you, um, you know, to do so uh, and whatnot. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's That's why he don't want y'all speaking. Don't. I'll give you your publishing, but you can't speak uh, bad boy. 
especially negatively. You cannot speak of us. And as you see, B5, why they, they still speak ill of Diddy, you know, like, and that's why they don't have their publishing. They were just recently live talking about how they don't have their publishing still and how Diddy left them out of the conversation because they have not spoke to him um, about none of the members or their manager. Um, They have not spoke about publishing. He still owns it and they want it. They want what's entitled to them. And he ain't, he still hasn't reached out. He's still ain't doing none of that. And here's another thing, even with all of this going on with Daily On and you know and all of that stuff, Diddy still gets paid off the brand. He still gets paid off of Ciroc, and he still gets paid off of um Daily On. With the company not backing him anymore, it's necessary that it stays successful. That's necessary. That it stays successful. If it does not stay successful, then they can get rid of the band, uh, band brand in general. Like they can get rid of De Leon, they can get rid of Ciroc, you know, so they can have it discontinued so that it's not being sold anymore, you know, and whatnot. So, and that could be next. And I think that that's probably why his stomach hurting so bad because they're not playing with him that, oh no, oh no. And again, this ain't even going to court. It's over with, they're gonna settle and all of that. And it's still people that's like, no, Kesha, the singer, um, one of her biggest hits. Um, she said his name at the beginning of the song. She removed his name. People aren't playing. They're they're, they're not gonna play with him. So this is bad. This, this is not good. This, this is not good. And I believe that Diddy wanted to work with these people again. Um, with Diageo, I believe they wanted to work with. I believe he's gonna try to work it out. Um, hoping to get rid of this with Cassie, and then trying to sit down with a new negotiation because you can always you know, work things out, you know, um, and come back. But, you know, it's, it's from what it seems, they don't want any dealings um, with Diddy. So <clears throat> I've had to contribute a thousand. In response, Diddy's attorney, uh, John Houston, said in a statement that Diageo attempting to end its deals with Comb is like firing a whistleblower who calls out racism and that the company's decision is a cynical and transparent attempt to distract from multiple allegations of discrimination. The, this lawsuit and Mr. Combs are not going away. Houston said, um, attorney Josh uh, Jerbin told CNN that it's not surprising that Diageo wanted to end its agreement with Combs because whenever a lawsuit gets filed that makes such a strong allegation of wrongdoing, it is a sign of an irreparable break in a business relationship, okay? So again, whenever a lawsuit gets filed that makes such strong allegations, what do you think happened with Diddy and Cassie? How strong were those allegations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, they broke uh, ties with Diddy and then Diddy sued them. They didn't break ties with Diddy after he sued them. No, you sued them because they let you go. Like, please, please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. So um, that's where the suit came from. That's where the suit came from. It absolutely did. Um, y'all for, I don't know what y'all say. Um, y'all said something about Dream. Oh, a Dream was dope. Yeah, I used to love Dream. Dream was, you talk about the girl group Dream on Bad Boy? Because they were amazing. Because, you know, Diddy, Diddy, now, you know, the girl in Dream, she was also in love and across the thing with Nick Cannon and Christina Milian, the pretty white girl, the blonde in the group. She got R-worded, allegedly, by Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. Okay, she sued him, all of that. Okay, all of that, all of that, right? Allegedly, Diddy's Diddy, your name came up in that. Your name came up in that, bro. Your name came up in that. Absolutely. That's why I say he's a very protected individual. Because she came from Bad Boys Camp, the girl from the group, and from the group, group Dream. I forget her name right now. 
but she sued Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys for R-wording her. Mm -hmm. In a bathroom um, or something like that. She sued him and everything, like filed a report, all of that. Um, allegedly, Diddy, you have something, I'm not going to say to do with the R-wording, but making Nick feel entitled to her, from what I hear. Um, you were inviting, you know, even going all the way back to Rihanna and Chris Brown, when Chris Brown and Rihanna got into that altercation, when Chris Brown got out of jail, Diddy had Chris Brown and Rihanna at his house, jet skiing and all of that. 100%. He was protecting Chris. He protected him after all of that happened. I still have the pictures of Chris Brown and Rihanna on the jet ski um, at Diddy's house in Miami. Same house he's at right now. Mm -hmm. So he has a pattern of this um, protecting people that are being accused of certain things and, you know, and whatnot. So when it came to Nick Carter and oh girl, allegedly, um, he had something to do with making Nick feel like entitled to her, you know, like how he felt entitled to Cassie, you know, like she was his property. But yeah, I, I love the group dream. Um, yeah, I remember they came back and they had a new member and then there was just three of them and then they just were gone. Um, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, Diddy loved, you know, the, the younger male crowd, you know, like Usher, Justin Bieber. Uh, he's been hanging with them from a very young age, you know. Bow Wow, Chris Brown. Um, all of them from a very young age, very young age. They were all teenagers, and he showed interest in all of them. Um, that's why I wanted this lawsuit to go further, because a lot of these male institutes are celebrities. They're not just... When Diddy was sending her online to find men, it would... The longer they were together, because, you know, Instagram, you know, and all of that. She would, he would just, she would, he would just go pick, like just, just go. So a lot of these people are celebrities. A lot of these men um, were celebrities. They, they weren't just like people think they're just random people off the street. No, um, a lot of them are celebs. That's why I was interested in hearing the names that she was going to name. Because I hear some of them are celebrities. Um, my girl. So I'm um, absolutely. So I believe she just said prostitutes because everybody was paid. Um, there was nobody that came in and did anything for free. Um, everything they did, they were compensated for. So if you're a celebrity doing that, you're still a prostitute. I mean, just because you're an actor or singer or rapper or an athlete, um, doesn't mean that you're not prostituting. Like it's. It's an obstitution. I'm a celebrity. Um, it's still it. <laughs> like it still is. Um, so yeah, please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Um, so yeah, so let's move on into another deal that he lost because of Cassie. You know, let's get into that. Let's get into that. Hold on, because you know me. Ho 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 ho. <clears throat> Shout out to TMZ. Diddy, um, $185 million cannabis deal goes kaput after company merger fails. Now, this was in August. This was in August of this year. The separation of him and Diageo was in like June. I told y'all, this lawsuit with him and Cassie been going on. Just as of this year, I feel it's when it was being threatened to be made public. So they're like, oh, if you got something that you need to handle behind the scenes, it's behind the scenes, nobody knows. But when things start to enter the court system and whatnot, 
certain petitions for certain things and stuff like that, employers are going to know about that. They're going to know. Okay. So with this deal, it never came through. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It never came through because can I see? they knew what was going on. Like, oh, no, we're not about to merge. Because why would people risk losing that type of money if it's not something serious? If it's not something serious. So again, they know about a lot of stuff that we don't know about. They do. Trust me. They know about a lot of stuff we have no idea of. No idea of. Okay? I promise you. So, um, do you think um, in order to know Diddy, you know Diddy. Um, but, you know, prove it. That's, that's all I got to say. Um, I don't believe anybody that's just talking. If you have receipts backing what you're saying, let's talk. But if not, I don't, I don't, don't waste my time and I won't waste yours. Um, Diddy will have to find another cannabis company to capitalize on as the bad boys moguls extended 185 million purchase to acquire a pair of marijuana operations is no longer going down. Sources with direct knowledge tells us Diddy waited in the wings as Cresco Labs and California, uh, uh, sorry, Columbia Care planned their proposed merger that was agreed upon last year, okay? So last year they agreed upon in 2022. It was, it was happening. It was happening. However, we're told the shareholders never reached an agreement and Diddy's deal was terminated earlier this week as a consequence. Diddy's team tells us that and his Combs global empire still have a vested interest in pursuing opportunities to diversify the cannabis industry. They just have to find the perfect fit. Mm -hmm. The move would have made Diddy the owner of nine stores throughout New York, Massachusetts, and Illinois, which uh, with each having its own production facility, effectively making him the biggest black cannabis business owner. Guess it's on to the next one. Yes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because why? this is a lot of money, you know, for people to be turning down. For these companies to be like, mm, nah. <laughs> mm, nah. We'll pass. All this year. This was in August. The uh, business deal that uh, with uh, Diageo, that was in June. Why wasn't this happening? Like, they've been in business. Like, okay. Before uh, this year, 2023, Diageo had no plans to terminate the contract with Diddy. This cannabis company, uh, Columbia Care and whatnot, they already made the agreement to make the deal as of this year. Both have declined from working with him. Both. Why? Why? This deal could have went through. There was no, because they already agreed upon it. If it can go through, if it, if it was something messing it up, nine stores and not. Mm -mm. They don't want no dealings. They, they don't want any dealings. They're like, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, uh-uh, no, we, we get it. We, uh, uh, but what's coming out about you? Uh-uh. Because -uh. Cassie is not it. There is more coming. There is more coming. This is just the beginning. Just the beginning. That's why Cassie is brave because a lot of people are, <laughs> this is the year of people doing that. And then it's further proof. Let's get into this. Let's get into that. Let's get into this. People are done. People are over it. People are over it. Diddy's ex Misa Hilson post cryptic move, move, move. Cryptic social media rant slamming rapper after son's arrest, okay? Now, Misa is Justin Combs' mother, okay? This is who she is, all right? And this year, Justin got arrested. And when Justin got arrested, that's not surprising. What's surprising is what she said right her. She says, this is Misa. Everyone has to sit around for years and act like there isn't anything wrong with you. This is where the buck stops for me. 
So Misa saying, everybody just sit around you like ain't nothing wrong with you. There is a lot wrong with you. It's a lot wrong with you. And you need to work on that. Like, because you do a lot wrong to people. Like, you are an evil person. You absolutely are. But I'm going to protect my friend. I mean, my friend, my kid. I'm going to protect my son. You're not going to make him like you. And I think that this is what this is given because Diddy did everything in his power to protect Justin within the situation so that he wasn't getting like charges um, and stuff like that. I think it's Justin's behavior is what Misa is talking about. I think that Justin is a bad person. I feel like Justin can be sweet, but Justin is a bad person, meaning he's spoiled. He does a lot of drinking and partying, um, very promiscuous with a lot of different women. They've had to get rid of pregnancies and whatnot. Winter from the Bad Girls Club. Um, she got pregnant about Justin and had a meeting with Misa, um, Diddy, and Justin Combs. And Diddy and Misa encouraged her to get rid of the child. I mean, when I was more so Diddy, um, but, you know, they encouraged her um, to get rid of her baby and whatnot. So I think that that's what it is. And I think that she's like sitting back looking at him, you know, like you are just like him. You know, you are a lot like him. And we got to stop you from becoming him because he's done a lot to people, you know, um, he has. So what him doing a lot of people is just like, I need to, to stop this. I need to stop this like a girl, a girl. Um, if he's not, he claims him. He, he done been there his whole life. His last name, Combs, all of that. So if that's not true, he claiming them. So that's the information. Diddy would need to know, not me. I don't need to know that. I'm not taking care of Justin. I don't put him in college. To, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't do none of that. Um, so that's beyond me. He takes care of him because it's the same thing with Quincy Brown. Um, Quincy's not his son, but he's taking care of him. He, he definitely did. He sure did. Um, and girl, uh, although he forced it, but he, he still took care of him. Um, Quincy was very well taken care of. So I, I will say that. Um, he was very well taken care of. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we don't care um, about that. His last name is Combs. He takes care of him. He didn't take care of him since he's wrong. So let's get into what Misa actually have to say. And so I can tell you why I feel like she's talking about her son. Shonda becomes ex-girlfriend Misa Hilton is seemingly taking aim at the rapper after their son was arrested and charged with DUI over the weekend. Hilton 50 spoke about or spoke out via her Instagram stories on Sunday, the same day her son, Justin Combs, 29, was booked and later released on bail in Los Angeles. The stylist appeared to air her grievances with Diddy, 53, cryptically writing that this is where the buck stops after uh, for her after sitting around for years and acting like there isn't anything wrong with you. In a post, she seemingly referenced the rapper's recent lawsuit against Diageo, who he, um, whom he sued last month for racial discrimination, alleging that the li liquor company failed to adequately, adequately, sorry, adequately promote his Ciroc and De Leon brands. Okay, so this one's worth that. She says, how do you go from one of the greatest to ever do it, making all of your money off alcohol and suing the damn alcohol company? Hilton wrote, sell something healthy that builds people up. I'm sick of it, not mine. She then wrote that she should have kept my child with me and added F UCLA to the university at which her son played football and graduated in 2016 with a sociology degree. Another post seemed to reference the song Act Bad, which Diddy released last month with Fabulous and the City Girls. She says, the state of fish rots from the head down means that in addition to being a major contributing factor in a family or organization's success, leadership is also the root and cause of failure, of, of its failure and demise. The truth shall set you free. Diddy, you're being popped on multiple levels right here. You're being popped on multiple levels when it comes to her 
again, now with Cassie coming forward and speaking, it puts a little bit more energy behind what these people are subliminally saying, right? So with her talking about the liquor, you know, and whatnot, and, you know, suing them or not, sell something healthy, when her son, they get to drink the liquor for free. So she's saying like her son running around getting DUIs and arresting and whatnot because he got endless supplies of Ciroc and, you know, De Leon and whatnot. So she's like the audacity to be suing a company that your son getting charges for. Like, you're not suing them because your son getting a D, they got a DUI because of that. Well, not because of them, you know, but, you know, off of their brand, you know, but it's like, yeah, you tried it. Like, uh-uh. You are the reason everything is out of demise. Like, I should have kept my son with me. She says that. Meaning, he wouldn't have turned out like this if I would have just kept him closer to me. I shouldn't have let him be with you. Like, meaning, she, like you she said, not mine. It's like, no, my son is not going to end up like you. Like, I got to do something. Like, we, I got to step in. Like, you know, it stops here. You know, like, because... I'm slowly but surely looking at my son and I don't see him no more. I see you. I don't see him. He basically you. And so I feel like that's what she's saying. Knowing that her son is doing things that are wrong, not commending, like, not, I mean, like, <clears throat> I don't feel like she's trying to blame it on Diddy. I feel like she's saying, due to the lifestyle that you have been providing for him, basically his whole life is why he's like this. That's why he's done so many things to people. He's hurt people. You know, all of this, like, he's done these things, you know, because of his upbringing. And being so spoiled to any time they get in trouble, it gets buried, you know, and whatnot, instead of the people knowing so that they can be warned, you know, about people like Justin and people like Diddy. I feel like she's stating that within him, too, like, or her own son. Speaking of Diddy, is speaking to her son. So, like, when she's saying this here at the top, when she's saying, um, right here, everyone sits around for years and act like there isn't anything wrong with you. Um, I think she's saying that about her son, too. You know, I've been sitting around for years because we do that as parents. You know, we kind of overlook, you know, things that our kids do sometimes just because, you know, we love them so much. So, like, when they get in trouble, you know, do something like that, we kind of just, you know, kind of just like, oh, well, you know, it's my baby. You know, it, it happened. But, you know, they're going to learn. You know, they're already doing this and doing that to you know, blah, 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 like you go right into protective mode instead of, you know, identifying the problem so you can try to help them solve it. So, um, you know, let's check my head why I have your kids around that. Um, the power of Diddy, uh, you got to think about a person like him, when he wants something, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. So it's better her be able to see her child than he pay a bunch of expensive lawyers to take her child away from her. Um, and when you're afraid of someone or afraid of what they can and will do to you, because she has other stories too. When we come back live later, I'll speak on Misa's other stories too, um, that she had with Diddy, like when she was growing up, you know, well, not growing up, but when she was younger um, and dealing with Diddy, um, there are stories um, that she has. So we'll, we'll get into those too. Um, but yeah, I would rather see my kid than try to keep my kid away from him and he take my kid, you know, legally take me to court and destroy me with the power of money and attorneys and my baby and my baby gone. And I just, I can hold all the power. So I would rather work with him than against him. So um, I think that's why he was around a lot of it. Um, shout out to 70 or uh, 747 flight it says, do you think the DA in New York and Cali are going to file the ex Rico charges against Diddy now that Cassie, uh, no, um, the only way that they would do that is any strong witness accounts, strong witness accounts, taking somebody like Diddy to court and losing ruins it for anyone in the future. So if they take Diddy down. It got to be with the smoking gun, like Keithy D. Like, like we're going to charge somebody with something. We we need, because th th when I keep saying that it's not over, one of the things is Keithy D. If they arrested Keithy D, 
and they're using his memoir and other things against him. They are not going to ignore that Keefe D said that Diddy set this up. They're not going to ignore that. It's not going to be ignored. So this is another thing that has Diddy sick to his stomach. Because he knows a lot is about to come out. Suge Knight is also in jail. Suge will be talking. And they're going to consider anything Suge says. Because he was there. He was present. And the long stemming beef that Suge Knight and Diddy has had. What does Suge have to lose? What does Suge have to lose? So you best believe somebody in Diddy Camp is probably doing everything in their power to derail Suge Knight and get him to talk about something else. I promise you. His, comments, his books on his commentaries may be looking very nice right now. Like, so they can try to get him to shut his mouth. Because, uh, girl, they, are, they have pretty much everybody they need. Having Keefe D and Suge Knight is enough to bring Diddy up on charges. So, um... With the DA coming down on him in New York City, I think that they have to have something like for sure to nail him, you know, to the post. If not, then no. I, I don't think they'll do any. I, it's not to say that they won't do anything in the future. Um, I just think of as of right now until they have something hardcore because you're going up against a billionaire. So it's not just the victims going up against the billionaire. The federal government will be going up against the billionaire too. Like endless resources to make whatever need happen, they need to make happen. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. The only thing she can say is that him and Diddy did not have a deal. And I believe that. I believe Suge had his own contract on Tupac. I don't believe that he and Diddy was working together. So if Suge says no, I you know dot dot dot, I, I believe Suge because it didn't involve him. Keefe D never said that Suge was a part of it. In the recording in, uh, with the Federal Bureau of Investigation with the FBI, when um, Keefe D sat down with them and they recorded him stating that did he had everything to do with it, um, he never mentioned Suge. Besides, there was a hit on Suge too. He never said that. Suge was in any agreement to end Tupac. So I would agree. I, I would agree with Suge when he says that it wasn't Diddy because him and Diddy didn't have anything set up together. Diddy hated Suge, still does. So um, with that being stated, I mean, it's still the, nothing changes. Nothing, nothing changes. Um, with, with that, um, and it was, yeah. So, um, Barbara says, when the feds get quiet, get your stacks ready because the documents are also, correct. Uh, and <clears throat> somebody else said in the chat that the feds have endless funds too. Correct, but is it worth it? That's why they need like hard evidence because to use all of these resources and all this stuff with a trial that would be so big, bringing Diddy, in, bringing Diddy up on any charges is gonna be massive. The coverage, all of that, the spotlight that will be placed on it, it's going to be massive. So they don't want to look stupid. They don't want the outcome to be he's walking away scot-free. So they're definitely going to want some strong evidence that he can't negate so that they can bring him in for sure. You know, um, they don't want to be wrong or not have enough evidence to support what's going on. So, yeah. I'm not saying that they, they they have no interest. I just think that they need solid proof. Otherwise, I don't think they will um, do anything. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So she says, I'm not protecting no one anymore, just my son. Okay. She said this was this year. I'm not protecting anyone anymore, just my son. So she says she's not protecting Diddy anymore. And if she's saying protecting, protect Diddy from what? Protect him from what? She's saying all of this before Cassie came public with the lawsuit. It's all before. This year, though. 
few months back. What what does she mean? She's not protecting him anymore. Protect him from what? What do you know? Because oh, she knows stuff. Oh, she absolutely do. And when we come back later, we'll be getting into that and what she knows, what Kim Porter knows, um, all of that. We're, we're going to be taking a dive into that. We're also going to be taking a dive. I know y'all see y'all talking about Wale. We will be talking about Wale as well. <clears throat> we will be talking about Wale and what allegedly happened to Wale. Wale is a rapper. Um, if you guys don't know who Wale is, loved Wale. He was such a good rapper. Um, so yeah, so we'll get into Wale too. A little piece of French Montana, a little piece um, of him too. But um, yeah, we, we definitely will. But Misa, I wanted to bring her into the forefront because when we come back later, I want to talk about her and a lot of things that she said. She didn't say some stuff about Diddy. She didn't, she didn't say some stuff. Now, she's the bold one. She's the bold one out of all the women that Diddy has been with. Misa is bold. I like her. Um, She's very bold and she don't take no bull ish. You know what I'm saying? She don't, she don't take no bull ish. But I do want to get into what she's for years. For years. Because tomorrow we're going into the gay stuff with all the dudes, you know, um, that have had things to say about him. We're gonna break that down. But um, yes, yes, she does know a lot. She does. She absolutely she knows a lot. Um, shout out to um, Pam for the cash. Oh, sweetie, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you so much. I love you. So um, we will be back tonight. I'm about that. But I do want to leave you with this. Um, we'll read this article before we get out of here. Um, about Diddy sitting around being sick to his stomach. Y'all, please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. We will definitely be back live later. Um, Y'all know me. I like to come with receipts. Receipts or grow. Get into this. Dejected Diddy breaks oh, a breaks cover. Sean Combs is seen looking very stressed, and it's the first appearance since a uh, settling um, case um, with ex girlfriend Cassie. Nah. <clears throat> okay, pictures pop up. Save me out. I feel like this picture right here speaks the most. I feel like this picture speaks the most. And the reason why I feel like this picture speaks the most is because a lot of people are posting the pictures with him with his hands around his stomach. <clears throat> he could have had the part. Um, <clears throat> but I say that this picture right here is telling because this visibly shows stress. Visibly shows stress. It does. It does. This shows that something is wrong. Okay. And what's wrong is Diddy's not used to this type of press. When <clears throat> he was big in stories like this back in the day, when he was real big into them, social media wasn't popping. So like in the 90s when all the stuff happened to uh, Pac and Biggie, you know, and all that stuff now, on TV, you know, with news outlets and stuff like that, but that's easily managed. All you have to do is turn off the TV. Now we have social media, so it's everywhere, and it travels so much faster. Um, gossip, it travels so much faster nowadays. So <clears throat> I believe that, um, how does it look staged? Like, that, that doesn't sound right. You look staged. See how dumb that just sounded? See how dumb that just sounded? How does it look staged? No, it's truly what he's going through. And he didn't even know he was being photographed. He didn't even know he was being photographed. He had no idea. Because he wouldn't have wanted to be. That's why he ain't went nowhere. He ain't really left the house. He doesn't want to be photographed. He doesn't want to be seen. I wouldn't want to be. Not after no allegation like that. No, ma'am. I don't see how that would be staged. I think it's natural emotion. Why would he not be stressed out? So it's like everybody in the world knows what's going on with Cassie but him. That don't even make sense. 
for him walking around right here on this stage too, he did not know he was being photographed. He wouldn't have allowed it. He wouldn't have. I believe that was like a drone or something um, that took that picture. He wouldn't, he, at this moment in time, David does not want to be seen. And you know he don't want to be seen. Look at his beard. It's gray. Did he don't come out with no gray beard? He don't play that. He does not want to be seen. He does not want to be photographed. These photographs are not staged, in my opinion. Um, they're not staged. Because it doesn't make anybody feel sorry for him, you know, or anything like that. It's showing that he is really going through. Because he should be. Like, why, why wouldn't he be? Oh, this ain't nothing. Just a whole world going around talking about how my ex-girlfriend said that I used to have her grab BBC and, and, and put it in her and how her feels and da 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 like she letting the world know that I really did that I, uh, she never wanted me and that you know I prisoned her or trapped her, you know, explaining why she never came out with a second album after I signed a 10 album deal um with her. Why would he not be mortified? I'm like, why, why would his stomach not be upset? I wouldn't want to eat. I was like, we just don't get to see people like him handle these type of things because they're so rich. So it's easy for them to stay private, you know? So we, we don't, I'm glad he felt good. He need to feel that way. He needs to feel all of what he's feeling right now. He needs to, because this is just the beginning. And I think that that's what has him sick because he knows that this is going to open up a door for a whole bunch of other people. Even people that took settlements, even people with, with um, R. Kelly, they broke their NDAs. They broke their NDAs. They absolutely did. <clears throat> they broke their NDAs. So I feel like he's worried. He's really worried because he don't know what's next. Who's going to come out the woodwork next? They see all this attention she's getting, all the clout she's getting, how quickly I settled, how much money she got. What if a bunch of other people? You know, starting to come out the woodwork. You need to contact this people and that person and this person and make sure. Da, 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 da. He is very stressed out. Girl, please. Very stressed out. Look at Worst Reed. She was in, uh, under an NDA for how long with Dwight? And as soon as that was up, look at all the things that she's unveiled. The stuff that we never knew. We had no idea. We thinking when Roy's son did is that allegedly what he did, that he did it underneath her supervision. It was at her house. Da, 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 da. She went to jail for it. Da, 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 da. And she may have had something to do with it too. And you know, we thinking all of this stuff. And she come forward like, no, it didn't even happen with me. Like it wasn't even my house. You know, like when, you know, like da da da. You know, so it's like, this is just the beginning. Um, Thank you all so much for being here. Please hit the like. Please subscribe. We will be back later on this evening with more tea. We absolutely will be breaking down Misa. Um, she's going to be a big part of it. Um, and we're also going to, you'll see, just come, because it's going to be a whole situation. And I'm bringing my receipts. There's plenty of stuff that y'all know, but it's a lot that you don't. It's a lot y'all have no idea about. Literally. Like, because I didn't even have a, I'm like, this happened? What? I was like, oh my God. So we will be back later, okay? I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Like, subscribe. And until the next show, 